let's kick into it. So I'll introduce Kathleen, who's our climate uh, and air scientist. I'll go for that yeah, so I'll talk about the weather side of things and my usual sort of order of things is I'll go over the climate modes, things like is it El Nino, El Nino, that sort of thing. Talk about the current state, what happened in November and recent months about rainfall and soil moisture, and then look at what might be ahead for us. So, in terms of climate modes, probably the most familiar one to you all will be the El Nino Southern Oscillation, and we were at with that. And um, pretty much now we're at what they call, we're in what they're calling a weak La Nina. Um, then some other. Climate modes that affect our, our weather is the, where well, we don't need to worry about the Indian Ocean dipole, that really just um, affects our spring weather, that's a neutral mode so we don't really need to worry about that. Another one is the interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, now that's a 15 to 30 year kind of a cycle where you get sort of a favouring of El Nino type events or La Nina type events. Um, Back in the 80s and 90s, it was positive, and we tended to get more El Ninos. Around the turn of the century, it turned negative, and it was negative to about the beginning of 2014. We tended to get a few more El Ninos. Since about the beginning of 2014, it's been positive again, um, and it stayed positive throughout until October, and then just went. Pretty much near zero, really. It was negative 0.009 or something like that. So um, that's why I've kind of put it neutral. I, I think it's probably quite possibly only a temporary, temporary kind of flip, but we'll keep, um, keep track of that progress. And then another thing that influences our weather is the sort of the nearby sea surface temperatures. So here is. Um, just a map of the sea surface um, temperature anomaly with the yellow colours, um, yellow, oranges and reds being um, higher than normal sea surface temperature and the blue colours the cooler than normal temperatures. So around New Zealand here, and this is for sort of last season, so that's going from September, beginning of September, beginning of December, three months kind of average anomaly. Kind of warmer around um, our area. We look at just the past month and it, you know, again, same sort of warm temperatures last week. Is that born anywhere? Last week. So you can see it's really quite, the anomaly is quite strong. So it's supposed to be, give us one more daily. Um, so yeah, so quite getting into sort of the threes and fours. Um, quite high surface temperatures around New Zealand. So, you know, you might want to get your tops on. <laughs> Go for a dip. Um, so if that's, it's kind of, if we had the right sort of systems with those sorts, you know, we'd get quite warm sea surface temperatures around if we sort of had an onshore, had a low there bringing sort of onshore um, bad weather to us. You, you could imagine that maybe we, we might get quite a bit of rain out of those sorts of um, temperatures. And then there's the southern annular mode, which you might have heard about too, which tends to shift that westerly wind belt that you know, can be over New Zealand, can shift it north or south. Um, when it's positive, it's shifted south and we tend to get more anticyclones. And that's been the case. This is um, the index. It has been sort of the history. Um, so sort of later November, you know, December, you can see it's quite positive and we've you know, we've just had this anti cyclone the whole time. And the red lines are kind of the forecast. Um, likewise, this is a similar 14 day forecast. So it's tending to keep it um, positive. So this stage is not an indication that we're going to get a shift to a, a more of a westerly wind regime. Now, the current state. Um, how we've been going with rainfall, got a number of months up there. Uh, so, uh, spring's been interesting. Um, September, we were really quite wet up in the, this is the, sort of the, um, the different parts of the region. So up north, northern Hawke's Bay, Waikiri Moana, that, that was quite wet. 
in September, but down on the plains, we were quite dry. These are the um, percentage of, of normal rainfall that we get. So only about Southern Hawke's Bay, only half, only about 38% of normal September rainfall on the Herotonga Plains. In October, that kind of flipped around. The dry, um, the northern areas were reasonably dry, and these more southern areas were really quite wetter than normal. And then November, we kind of, we were getting this flip like, you know, sort of up and down, but now we're going side to side. Um, we've had kind of the coastal areas really dry in November, particularly that southern uh, coastal area, only about quarter of their normal November rainfall. And the inland areas, and particularly up by um, Lake Waikato Moana and the Kawika Ranges, um, they were really quite wet. So all in all, that we, if you're sort of within 80% of your um, of your rainfall, you're considered within the normal range. So when you every, average everything out over the region, we're pretty much um, in our normal range for each of the months. But it was quite variable um, over that time at different places. And um, really, when you average it out over the whole of spring, pretty much all areas got a, a sort of near normal rainfall for spring, except the southern um, Hawke's Bay coastal area. And we have, um, just for your information, we have joined a, um, a kind of a community global um, lightning detection network, um, blitzaltung.com, and so we've got um, a lightning detector now that we contribute to that network, and so these were the um, Cloud to ground strikes for November, about 144, 44, most of them up around that um, Lake Waikiri Moana area. Uh, a few down here too, where there was um, a bit more rain than some of the other areas. Uh, but yeah, we've had there were quite a number of those sort of heavy, thundery showers through the end of that. Really, most of those were for about the last five days of November. In terms of soil moisture, um, it seems like most of our sites got um, some of those showers that were in November, because uh, pretty much most of them are looking okay. So here, this is a timeline of just kind of your annual cycle um, of soil, soil moisture. Um, the black line is where we are at this, this current year. Um, the green line is the previous year. The dotted line is the median for the time of year and we've got the 19th and 10th percentiles. So when you're outside <laughs> the 19th and 10th percentiles, you get into the more unusual um, extremes. But for us, right now, December, um, we're just, we're above our median level for the time of year. Um, this is Bridge Par, just at the back of Hastings. So you're looking okay there for the moment. Um, I'm going to go down the central Hawke's Bay, again, above median levels for the time of the year. Crown Thorpe, again, that's sort of more out west, past um, west of Hastings, that's again okay. Uh, up in the far north, Hungaroa, just about, pretty much median levels. And Tahurua, right up in the northwest of the region, that's got a lot of the rain that we saw in November and they're pretty doing pretty well. Probably the one area, and this one hasn't got this isn't the record here isn't as long as the other ones. So here I'm just I've got all the years of our record plotted up. And so at the moment we're here. And that isn't too different from where we were at the same time um, last year. Obviously, 2012 13 was um, that drought year, and that's trundling along up here. So, yeah, down there, it's, it's probably really, really quite dry. Now, looking at a head, as I mentioned at the moment, week La Nina. So, that's, um, you can see here, this is a Bureau of Meteorology sort of model outlook for um, the ENSO, and so they have La Nina down here, our Nino up the top, and then between is, is a neutral area. 
So December here, with La Nina, and essentially kind of going uh, neutral, probably sort of for the autumn. It's not terribly long lived. Just to go over the new uh, seasonal forecast, um, temperatures above average, rainfall totals, one of almost equal charts of being normal or above normal, and likewise um, soil moisture levels. So it's for the summer. Oh, excuse me, ignore that October to December. I oh, should change that. It was December to February. And these are what some of the sort of the models are showing. This is precipitation for the summer um, and the sort of the difference from normal and it's around New Zealand it's kind of these sorts of colours, so it's kind of wavering a bit and it's for a lot of the models the precipitation um, signal isn't either strong or just suggests climatology, so just kind of <coughs> normal summer rainfall. And this gives you sort of a more of an idea of kind of the pressure patterns that uh, pretty much more the models are kind of going for. The reddy sort of colours mean higher pressures than usual, and the blue colours <coughs> lower pressures than usual. So they're kind of going for higher pressures than usual down um, southern, southeast New Zealand. So over us too, um, sort of higher, slightly higher than normal pressures. But the sort of that sort of pattern gives us kind of an easterly sort of a flow, so kind of more um, on shore type flow. And just to show that, yeah, there are another. This is another one, a different model, and it's kind of got the same sort of pattern. Now, just sort of show this. Um, you might hear about. Um, sort of blocking by anti-cyclones, that sort of thing. There is sort of there isn't a, a, a blocking index, and you see this diagram here of the blocking index. You see um, you've got your sort of your uh, longitudes along the bottom there. So we're around about here. Um, these are the dates. This is so we're sort of down in December, <coughs> and so in our area in December, you know, we've had this anti-cyclone for a while, so it's kind of indicating um, its story. And then there's, on this side, you've got some um, forecasts. Basically, these blocking index are based on sort of geopotential height anomalies. And um, these are forecasts of those sorts of anomalies. So it, you've got the um, different days from sort of one day to four day. And it kind of shows you got those the, the orange colour at the moment and it kind of moves away and kind of breaks down. So it's suggesting that that that's sort of the high that we've got at the moment will will kind of weaken somewhat. And then you go ahead some more. And you also see a panel at the top that's got some like these in this case, when you get down to here, it's got these sort of green bars, and that's supposed to indicate the strength of blocking. And so it's suggesting that getting down to about 15th, 14th, 15th, 16th, that we get that there's quite high pressures down to the south of us and it's wanting kind of low pressures to us and that the strength of blocking of that high is quite strong. Now this is one model and there is um, that particular model, say for this period down here, does want more so than I think other models uh, a low kind of off the east coast of us, um, bring us, bring us sort of quite a, a decent amount of rain. Now whether that does come to fruition, as that's one model and some of the other models aren't showing quite that sort of a pattern, but um, if, that, if that does come to pass then there could be a, a good bit of rain for us. And then previously, in some of these previous talks, um, I've been asked about um, when the, sort of the, the, the ranges will get some rain, what sort of patterns, um, you know, does that previous pattern, and that sort of pattern, does the ranges get some um, rainfall? Because rainfall in the ranges helps to feed the rivers and the aquifers. So I've looked at what's known as the Kidson 
weather types, and there's 12 of them, and there's sort of certain um, pressure patterns that are common across the country. And I've looked back to the, um, the kids and type on, at midday every day from 1985, pretty much, till 2017, and looked at, uh, just at this stage, a couple of sites, and, what the, and just looked at the rainfall on those particular, for those particular types of patterns. One's Tacoma, um, that's on the Kawika Ranges. Parks Peak is, the Rua, is on the Ruahine Ranges, oh, just to the east of them. Um, and Awanui is, is a site on the plains. And probably, maybe, I've looked at it for summer. That's those sort of are, are annual ones. And I've voted that's for summer. And I've just looked at whether, how, what percentage of days we actually got um, any rain, whether it would just be one or two mils, and what percentage of days did we get at least, you know, more than 10 mils. And really, um, these top ones are probably your best chance of getting some rain, and certainly these R type patterns, and the TSW type pattern, and to a certain extent the North East type pattern, you might get more than 10 mils um, on the ranges. Now those patterns are the R, as I mentioned, R, which is pretty much what we were looking back at that, what I was talking about with that blocking forecast. Um, your TSW is right up the top there, again just a low to, um, to the um, east, east of us, and north east, where's that one, down here. So kind of a, a low in the Tasman and a high just kind of east southeast of us. So um, and it's the probably the really between them the the runs and the ranges and ones on the plains, the sort of the similar similar systems give um, give the most rain. If you're looking at a westerly pattern like this, um, you've only got a 17% kind of chance, maybe 17, 24% chance of um, getting any rain. Um, on the plains, very low, and your chance of getting more than 10 mils is pretty much zero. So there's certain, there are certain patterns where, um, particularly the, sort of these westerly type ones, that, um, and probably one, this HE one, yes, you your chance of getting any rain are very low, both in the ranges and on the plains, really. So that's, um, I think that's me. So if there's any questions. Yeah, Kathleen, uh, from my perspective, uh, obviously Westerlies are, are our first end. They're probably the farmers as well, so we've heard stuff off now very quickly. Um, and what you're saying there is our chance of having a summer like we had last year with strong Westerlies after uh, Christmas and through the new year is what? Probably this, I mean, the indicators at this stage, not that's, that's kind of not the way the models are going at this point. They are, and even I think beyond the December to February, they're still, I mean, you will get some days like that, but it's not going to be, it doesn't look like it's going to be the dominant pattern. Because yeah, I think last year, even like from November through till the beginning of February, um, <coughs> it was just westerly, 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 wasn't it? Um, and, but, yeah, the, the indications from the model is that that's not the, going, to, going to be the predominant sort of overall effect. Any other questions for Kathleen? All right, well, if you think of others uh, during other presentations, we can certainly talk about those at the end as well. So now I'd like to introduce Rob, who will talk about service water. Morning. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a, an update on river flows um, for the last month and since our last comment briefing. <coughs> this is uh, the data for the November monthly flow report. Um, we've got a spread of sites throughout the region. Uh, as uh, Kathleen indicated with the rainfall, um, during October we had sort of uh, wetter in the north and dry in the south. Uh, sort of 
I guess roughly sort of normal conditions in the centre of the central sort of part of the region. This month we actually have had um, a bit of a change in the river flows in that we've, we've seen sort of dry or lower flows in the rivers, um, probably from slightly less rainfall in the north. Kind of around the, um, the south and the southern Hawke's Bay, um, Pronghoe catchment, um, we're also quite below normal and river flows are dropping off. Uh, and then a bit of a mixture of other sites throughout the region being sort of close to or below the normal range. The only main exception is the Mohaka River, which is flowing above normal, and that would be from the rain that they've been receiving in the headwaters of that catchment. Of the catchment. Um, so I normally do a bit of a, I've got a selection of four sites that are spread throughout the region. Um, just to give an idea of how those river flows are tracking at some of those sites. And these are based on monthly mean flows, um, and I've got a comparison with a, a couple of the years to a, a long-term record for um, just to put it into um, in perspective. I'll start with the um, Hangaroa River up in, in Northern Hawke's Bay. Um, this graph basically shows the long-term range, um, which is uh, sort of between the minimum and maximum in the, in the grey sort of shaded area. Uh, we have the long-term mean and the dotted li black dotted line um, for the record. And then either side of the long-term mean, there's a, a lighter gray area, which is um, the normal range, which is indicative of plus or minus 25% from the long-term mean. And then I have, um, we've got the current year's river flows in the black line. We have the 2012-13 year, which was one of our dry years in recent history, in the red line. And then the blue line is um, last year's flows. So just to give you a bit of a comparison with those um, different sets of data. And for the Hangaroa, we've, we've basically got um, river flows um, tracking sort of at, at, at this site sort of um, below normal um, for, for October, November. If I move on to the Esk uh, River, we have um, had river flows tracking sort of within the normal range um, for, that, for that central area, black line. If we move down to the Nororo River, um, again, um, still tracking within the normal range, just below the long term mean, but still within the 25% the um, uh, uh, deviation from, from that mean. And then moving further south into the Tuki Tuki, uh, we have flows which are, are, were above normal um, for, um, for October and have just dipped below the normal range um, to below normal for, for November. Now, um, the Niwa climate outlook for river flows is um, essentially for December to February, a bit like what Kathleen presented with the uh, rainfall and soil moisture, uh, we have an equally likely chance to be near or above normal range, which is a 35% chance and then a 30% chance to be below normal. Um, so I think we've got a few bands on for river flow sites uh, for, abstraction, um, for abstractions within the region, but at the moment I think most of those are sort of some of the high levels, not quite down to critical minimum flows, but see how things go, I mean, we'll, we'll, those are continue monitored um, and we'll give you another update with river flows and see how they're tracking for the next climate briefing. Um, but if anyone has any questions regarding the river flows. All right, very good. Okay. We'll save them up to the end if they occur to you. And last but not least, we'll hear from Simon on groundwater. new faces here. So last time we gave this talk I gave a bit of a rundown of what happened over the previous year. Uh, we've had a sequence of a few low water levels over the winters, not much recharge going on, so at those levels we hadn't had quite the recovery uh, and for those periods we had below normal water levels. Uh, for this previous winter that's been by, groundwater levels were topped up a lot more as Kathleen mentioned over October and September we had a bit more rainfall which we hadn't had in previous years and that's brought our water levels back into this normal range that we call it, which is a you know, good place to start from heading into summer. Uh, this talk today really focuses on the groundwater levels for November. Uh, we measure on a monthly basis, so this 
at this time. We haven't done our December ones yet, they're doing it this week. So I've managed to grab a couple of water levels from our telemetry sites where we can compare it to see what's going on. Um, and I mainly focus on the Herotonga and the Ruatanapa Plains, which are you know, major groundwater resources. <coughs> okay, so I just start off with the Herotonga Plains. Uh, what this is showing here is the location of all our monitor wells. Uh, what I've done different compared to last time is of where we've got sites on top of each other, I've blown them out so you can see that you know in some locations there's multiple wells at it, and I put numbers in there which relate to how long these sites have been monitored for. So where you have a site with say three, it's only got three years of data, and therefore those conditions aren't perhaps as reliable as the ones with 30 or 40 years of data. And you can see that already, you've got a dark blue here in the caramel area. It's only got three years of data, so it can easily go outside of its range and get these anomalies occurring also up at the top of the motio. But if you just have a quick look at it, what you are seeing is generally green and blue, which is saying that the water levels are about normal for, this is November, um, with, there's a couple of areas a bit higher, but pretty much normal, so not too bad. Just did a quick comparison to last month. Uh, again, it was a little bit different. We had you know, some below normal levels here in the unconfined area near Flaxmere, with mainly normal to the east over the confined area. In November, with the rainfall that occurred, we had just, you know, gravel levels stabilizing a little bit, not going down, declining as fast. And so compared to other uh, November water levels, they, they measured about normal conditions. So, uh, that was that was a good sign getting into getting into summer. Uh, just a couple of plots of hydrographs that I've chosen from the Hirotonga. So I've got uh, well three seven three seven, which is located just outside of Flaxmere, uh, and well fourteen fifty, which is in the confined area near Awatoto. Uh, and this is just comparing the current groundwater levels compared to other years, um, the, the red line represents 2012-2013, which is really one of our driest or lowest groundwater level years, so it's a good one to compare against to see how we're tracking according to that. Um, and the green plot is last year's groundwater levels, how we're comparing to last year. The bands here, we have uh, what we have defined as a below normal, so that's 0 to 20th percentile, um, and a normal range, which we've defined as 20th to 80th percentile and then 80 above is our above normal. So anything that plots below this is our lowest ever. Anything that pl plots above the grey is the highest level ever. Low normal, above normal, and <coughs> normal range. Okay, so starting at the top in the well 377 over the unconfined area, you can see at the black dot, this is December, so I've taken this from our telemetry site so we get a feel for what's happening right now. Uh, you know, we're about normal, we're just in the below normal range. Uh, it's not too different than the 2012-2013 year. Uh, some might be concerned about that, but things change quite rapidly. I think it's good that we're, you know, we're close to that normal range. It's not so bad. In the confined area where it's artesian, again, we've just dropped below the normal range into the uh, below normal area, and it's similar to 2012-2013. One thing to note is that these groundwater levels were measured at the start of November, so quite early on, um, and perhaps they would plot in that area, but maybe if they are somewhere in the mid-November, you might get them slightly lower, of course. The other thing I wanted to grab, mainly because the Navy City Council and the low, low water levels that are going on there, I wanted to just give you an indication of what our position of our groundwater levels are. So these are a couple of telemetry sites. Excuse the anomalies, this is just anomalies from our loggers. This is raw data, these spikes get taken out. This is the groundwater level trace going on. As you can see, this well is a bit more influenced by river and you can see some uh, nice little flash flows going through, uh, which would relate to probably high flows in the Nardarota River. Um, but what I'm trying to point out here is that groundwater levels are just at that early stage of the seasonal decline that they do. So somewhere between October and November, uh, groundwater levels might reach their peak and then people start pumping and we don't get as much recharge and groundwater levels start to go down. So, you know, we're quite early on in that stage and we expect groundwater levels to be, therefore, relatively high compared for the seasonal time of the year. Um, so what that's saying to me is that, you know, the issues that we were seeing in Napier City Council 
probably aren't a reflection of what's happening in the groundwater levels, but more of an infrastructure issue. issue. So this is the Royal Tanner Plains again, numbers to represent the number of years. Uh, this is quite nice to see because it's been a long time since I've seen a lot of greens and blues. But again, a lot of those blues are, are at sites that there's not too long a record, three years. But overall, you know, you can see that gravel levels are normal to above normal. They've bumped up with all that rainfall that occurred in October. This is early November measurements. Compar comparison to October and November. The October ones, I believe, were early in October measurement as well. Um, and so I think uh, the September there wasn't as much rainfall over that area. Groundwater levels, of course, are a lot lower, and we've had quite a change with that, that rainfall recharge event that occurred. These are, again, a number of sites that have low records. Not all of them, though, but you can see that compared to other times of the year, for October, groundwater levels were sort of below normal. Um, and now in November, they've jumped back up. Unfortunately, no December yet. Couple of hydrographs for the Rotana for Plains, uh, showing how the groundwater was applied. I won't go into explanation about the graphs again, but you can see the black line representing the current year. Um, and in October to November, you know, they pretty much went flat, whereas sometimes if there wasn't so much rainfall, you'd probably start to see the decline a lot more earlier. Uh, but with that rainfall, it was able to maintain groundwater levels at a, a reasonably flat position. This top one is in the bottom of the Ruatanama Plains and the Well 2220 is at the top near State Highway 50, uh, the central there by Tikitino. Again, a couple of plots from our telemetry data. Really it's showing the same thing. Groundwater levels are relatively high at this time of the year. We're right at the, the start of our seasonal decline, so you know it's still very early days and they're not certainly low. And just a quick summary, so you know, again, groundwater levels at this time of year, yeah, yeah they're about normal, no, no dramas yet. Uh, groundwater levels are beginning at the, just at the start of the seasonal decline, so we expect them to be high. It won't be until March, usually, or April, that we start to get our, our lowest parts of the year. Um, and we'll start to see them sharp, uh, decline sharpening once you know, people start pumping, or less rainfall and things like that, you'll start to see them decline now as they head down. Um, until about autumn, like I said. Um, groundwater level conditions can change really quickly. So yes, I can see that they're normal. Next month they can easily go below normal and we can hit record lows. They change quite quickly depending on what the climatic conditions are doing. Um, but at the moment, they're not too bad. And that's me.